Ladies and gentlemen, we're about ready to begin. There was a minor uh, hesitation in the uh, commencement of the program simply because I can't resist this. The MIA flag was MIA. <laughs> <laughs> Not the flag, but the chair cover that we use for the ceremony. But it, it's, it's, it's located and we're ready to go. My name is Len Lanza and I'll be the uh, master of ceremonies for this ceremony today. Commander of the Guard, present the colors. Comrade Elliott, please place the chair cover on huh? MIA POW chair cover. A POW MIA empty chair is placed at all official meetings of the Veterans of Foreign Wars and the American Legion. As a physical symbol of the thousands of American POWs and MIAs still unaccounted for, from all wars and conflicts. On an annual basis, I try to give an update as to what's happening with the process of recovery. For example, in July of this past year, North Korea turned over to the United States 55 cases of boxes and artifacts, which led to the identification of 41 Americans. During the past week, the Defense Department of uh, Prisoner of War, MIA Accountability Agency, discovered five more. They are, there were one, one Marine from Tarawa, 1943. Two Army men from North Korea, 1950 and 1951. And two Navy from the uh, USS Oklahoma, Pearl Harbor. As an update with the Vietnam War, the department still lists 1,587, still unaccounted for. That includes, it's very specific numbers. This isn't a random process. Uh, 1,246 in Vietnam, 286 in Laos, 48 in Cambodia, and seven in China. Uh, VFW leaders are in attendance in Vietnam every year to follow the, the process as it's taking place. And I call upon John Fox to deliver an invocation. Veterans, please uncover. Uh, before I start, I would like to dedicate this invocation to a lost comrade. On Thursday, it was uh, with deep regret to announce that we have lost uh, Bob Gothier. For most of uh, you recognize Bob as running the, as being a longtime member of the American Legion and running the uh, uh, Memorial Day events committee for many, many years. Um, so with that, I'll give the invocation. Today we are here to honor those that have served our country and given their lives so that we may stand here and still live in freedom. We need to be constantly reminded of our gift of freedom and of those who gave all to make sure 
that future generations continue to know life in a free, democratic society. Remembering those who have passed is only half the task that is before us today. We must also carry the love, honor, and duty forward to the future generations that will pass. Our children must know who they were, what they did, and why they did it. To do anything less would be a disservice to their sacrifice and their memories. Those have gone, created a clear pathway for us to continue on. We must never waver from the path of freedom and democracy. We must take these memories, take their dreams, and walk forward, shouldering their cause of freedom, carrying it high and proud. They did, and now you must walk forward for them and for our children. Amen. I now ask that you join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. To we we have with us this morning, again this year, uh, David Moore, <coughs> our, our very gifted soloist. Now, I've introduced David uh, on, on several occasions in the past, but I never knew anything about Dave. <coughs> and uh, I've, I've learned something in the last week or so that I think is, is relevant and, and should be brought to the audience. So if you bear with me for a minute. Uh, this year is especially meaningful for Dave, as his father, a World War II veteran, passed away in August, and unfortunately, he never saw Dave perform the anthem. His father was the Pacific Fleet Chaplain on Admiral Nimitz staff from 1943 to 45, and his father had forbidden, his, his grandfather had forbidden his father from joining the Navy during the war. By the end of 1944, he was well aware of the plans to invade Japan and didn't want uh, his father anywhere near the Pacific. Uh, he joined anyway in, 1970, in 1944, went in as an electrician's mate, and was halfway done with training when Germany surrendered. On top of that, uh, Dave's older sister, uh, his father's older sister, was a wave during World War II. One of his great-grandfathers was a private in the 7th Cavalry from 1863 to 1865. A great-great-grandfather was a captain of one of the uh, Coney Island militias during our Revolutionary War. It's a pleasure. David? What so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight for the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming, and the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in. Still there, oh say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please be seated. <clears throat> I 
I now call upon Eric Wellman to deliver greetings from the town. First Selectman Eric Wellman. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Veterans Day is a special day when we recognize and give thanks to all of those who served in the United States military, the Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, and Coast Guard. I recognize and thank all in this room who are part or who have been part of the brotherhood and sisterhood we call the U.S. military. Thank you to the American Legion post-84 and the veterans of foreign wars post-1926 for organizing today's ceremony and for all of the work that you do throughout the year on behalf of veterans and their families right here in our community. I'd like to acknowledge our public officials who are in the room with us today, our state representative, John Hampton, uh, two uh, incoming uh, members of your board of selectmen, uh, Wendy Maxtudis, if you will mind just giving a little wave, Wendy, and, uh, and Jackie Bados. We approach the year 2020, the 350th anniversary of our great town, a town that is older than our nation. I give pause and reflect upon the beautiful and solemn memorial outside of our public library that holds the names of residents of this community who gave their lives in service to our country, some even before we were a country. This tremendous anniversary is an opportunity to reflect on the trajectory of our town and the accomplishments of its people. On this Veterans Day and in the months to come, I encourage our residents to take the time to listen, get to know a veteran, get to know their story, and if they're willing, record their story. I spent the first decade of my career as a radio host and journalist in the NPR system, and as an interviewer, it was my job to capture people's stories, creating a space where people wanted to share. There's a lot of art in getting people to want to share, but the first step is to ask, and then the next step is to listen and to sometimes replace the, to sometimes embrace the silence that follows. My grandfather, a veteran of the Second World War, passed away around the turn of the 21st century. He didn't tell many stories about his time in the service, but boy, did he tell stories. <laughs> and that's what I mean when I talk about asking veterans to tell their story. It's not about capturing the story of valor, a story specific to their service. It's about understanding one's life, one's perspective, one's hopes, one's fears, and perhaps if they choose, their service is a piece of that story. My grandfather passed away before I had the chance to sit down with him and formally record his story. But about 10 years later, I vowed not to miss the same opportunity, so I sat down with my other grandparents and I asked them to tell their story, which we did over a couple of hours, and I now have that recording in my house to cherish for the rest of my life. Their story is not a, a veteran's story, as they never served in the armed forces, but it is a quintessential American story. Today, we honor all of those who served in the United States military because it is their service and in some cases their sacrifice that gives every family the opportunity to tell its own American story. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. John, you want to do it now? Everyone, please stand. Have a moment of silence. It's 11, 11, 11. Thank you. The 11, 11, 11 marks the 11th day of the 11th month of the 11th hour of Armistice Day, uh, which later became Veterans Day uh, 100 years ago. So today is the 100th anniversary of the first Veterans Day. Thank you. I now call upon um, Jim Feeney, 
with the uh, Talca Mountain Highlanders to do Amazing Grace. Thank you very much, Jim. Beautifully done. Now I ask uh, Wilson Keithline, a member of the Veterans of Foreign Wars and a uh, veteran of the United States Navy, to come forward. Thank you, Lynn. As I look out at this audience, I see a lot of gray hair. <laughs> and it's even those who wear the symbol of their service. Now these veterans didn't have that gray hair when they provided their service. They were young men. They had the energy to serve and they entered into a world of discipline and a world of obedience to orders. Now that discipline and patriotism stayed with them throughout their civilian careers and brings them here to celebrate this day. Now there's some empty seats here, but that's not important. What is important is that ceremonies like this are occurring in all the cities and towns throughout our nation. These ceremonies are celebrated by the veterans as well as our neighbors who acknowledge what that service by men and women did and still do for our country. I mentioned the service of women as well. When I left the Navy, I went to law school at night. Our original class at the University of Connecticut started with 80 students, of which three were women. Now, 50 years later, women constitute half or more than half of the law school graduates. Now much the same is happening in our armed services. Women are joining the services, about 30% of them who currently join go into the Army. And a like amount go into the Navy and similarly into the Air Force. And about 8% actually join the Marines. Now, one in six of those who wear the uniform today are women, and they're of all ranks. A few minutes ago, we heard David Moore present our national anthem. That anthem celebrates the land of the free and the home of the brave. Our land is free because it's the home of the brave. There are young men and women <clears throat> following the lead of our veterans and carrying that banner to preserve their freedom and ours. A freedom which now we all take for granted. But they continue to preserve the land of the free. 
Now please let me echo some words that were recited several times over the years at the Tarrafield Cemetery on Memorial Day. In remembering and honoring those who gave so much of themselves, including their lives, to give proof that this is indeed the home of the brave. Now when I speak, please remember that when I use the word soldier, feel free to interpret that as including sailors, marines, airmen, coast guardmen, and so forth. It is the soldier, not the clergyman, who has preserved our freedom of religion. It is the soldier, not the reporter, who has preserved our freedom of the press. It is the soldier, not the lawyer, who has preserved our right for a fair trial. It is the soldier, not the poet, who has preserved our freedom of speech. So today we celebrate those brave men and women, <coughs> for it is the soldier <coughs> who salutes the flag, the soldier who serves under the flag, and it is a soldier whose coffin is draped by the flag. Thank you. very much, Wilson. <clears throat> Jim, um, Highland Cathedral. Very much, yeah. I call upon David Moore to do America the Beautiful. Lynn asked me to mention something that uh, is uh, the reason why I had suggested this particular piece is because it is a song that is near and dear to my family, because my grandmother Moore was the classmate of the person who wrote America the Beautiful. <clears throat> oh, beautiful for spacious skies, for amber waves of grain, 
For purple mountains' majesty Above the fruited plain America, America God shed his grace on thee And crown thy good with brotherhood From sea to shining sea Oh, beautiful for patriots' dreams that see beyond the years. Thine alabaster cities gleam, undimmed by human tears. America, America, God shed his grace on thee, and crown thy good with brotherhood from sea to shining sea. Now I think you see why I felt it was important that we know something about David's background. <laughs> but if that hadn't come to me by accident, you know, it would have been lost, at least for, for this year. Uh, now, uh, Debbie Payne, of the uh, DAR, is going to speak about uh, our upcoming function and wreaths across America. Thank you. Good morning. The Abigail Phelps Chapter, Daughters of the American Revolution, assisted by the Simsbury VFW and the American Legion, will conduct the 2019 Simsbury Wreaths Across America ceremony on Saturday, December 14th at noon in the Simsbury Cemetery on Plank Hill Road. This beautiful ceremony has really become a holiday time tradition here in Simsbury. This year's national theme is everyone plays a part. Those who have served in the military have done their part. Those currently serving are doing their part. And it is our part as Americans to see that their service and sacrifices are never forgotten. Ceremonies will be held simultaneously at Arlington National Cemetery and 1,600 locations in all 50 states at sea and abroad. We appreciate all the volunteers, participants, and wreath sponsors, and everyone who plays a part in making it happen here in Simsbury. If you would like to sponsor a wreath, you may purchase one to be placed on the grave of a specified uh, veteran buried in the cemetery, or you may purchase a wreath for an unspecified veteran, and it will be placed on the grave of a veteran that would otherwise be without one. <laughs> Or you may purchase a wreath to pick up after the ceremony and place it on the grave of a veteran in another cemetery. The cost of a wreath is $15. Five dollars of each wreath sale will be donated to a veteran's cause. Order forms are out in the rotunda or you can pick one up at the library or the senior center. As we look forward to the busy holiday season and all of our activities, we invite everyone to take a little time out to play a part in remembering our veterans on December 14th. Dress warmly and join us for this 30 minute service and there will be a chili, hot chocolate and holiday desserts reception immediately following the ceremony in the program room of the Simsbury Library. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. I'll emphasize again, dress warmly. <laughs> it, get, it gets nasty up there on the hill. <laughs> there have been two occasions where we've had to cancel it over the last dozen years. Okay, um, now we're going to um, John Fox to talk about uh, something very near and dear to my heart, the purchasing of the Veterans Memorial Papers. Have a seat. <laughs> I've actually got three announcements, and I'll group them all together and do them in sequence. Uh, the first is um, we have a beautiful memorial just down the road, across the street, and just down the road. 
Um, would like everyone who has a relative in their family or has a friend to consider honoring that veteran with a paver in our beautiful Sinsbury Veterans Memorial next to the library. Um, a couple of questions often arise. There's slightly different changes to the, uh, the program has evolved regarding those pavers. Uh, first, a question that comes up all the time, and that is no. The veteran does not have to be a Sinsbury resident, and not even a Connecticut resident. Uh, many of the pavers are out of state. Uh, a couple of them are out of country. Um, veterans that served in the Merchant Marines and Cadet Nursing Corps from WW2 are also accepted. We're probably the only memorial in the state that accepts the Merchant Marines and their service in World War II and the Cadet Nursing Corps. Uh, please note that applications have changed uh, and are found in the, uh, they are found in the public library, uh, at the front desk of the public library, Eno Hall Senior Center, so just around the corner, and the town hall next to the information center. Or they can be downloaded from the website, from the VFW website at www.vfw1926.org. Uh, please do not use the old paver applications. They are no longer correct. You'll be sending them to an address that doesn't exist anymore. Um, I don't know if that post office box is forwarded, but I haven't received anything out of it. So um, please also note, this year we only had two paver applications. So there wasn't a, uh, we even opened it up from May through September, and I put in the paver applications late. Uh, there was only two, and uh, there's a cost to install that's uh, exceeding what the uh, donations for the pavers were. So please note that the paver applications can be sent in any time, and we'll put, in, we'll put out several press releases reminding people that you can send in your application at any time. They come to me, essentially, uh, at the VFW post office box. Um, it's only coincidence, um, I'm the one handling the, uh, uh, shall we say, the pavers and the memorial going forward. So um, being the commander of the VFW, I've been asked that everything go to that PO box. Um, there will be no, there will no longer be tied to a specific date for installation. Installation will occur when sufficient pavers are received to warrant the, uh, the expense of the installation. Incidentally, if there are any observed issues with the memorial, uh, please contact me and let me know. I know we have a lighting issue that we've been struggling with since May. Um, I don't know what the resolution of that will be. To, uh, that's been uh, brought to the attention of Public Works, and uh, we hope that we get it resolved soon. Um, the other announcement is the Veterans of Foreign Wars post-1926 uh, clothing drive. Every year, the Simsbury VFW uh, collects clothing and accessories. These are new uh, articles of clothing and accessories that, that are presents for the veterans residing at the, uh, the Connecticut Veterans Affairs Nursing Home in Rocky Hill. For, for anyone who has not seen that nursing home, it is a magnificent facility. Uh, it also houses the State Department of VFW and American Legion. Um, but there are 104 beds there. Uh, and fortunately or unfortunately, these are the only presents, holiday presents, that are wrapped by, uh, that these veterans receive. And they're wrapped by the auxiliary who, who's resident at that facility. Uh, they're volunteer workers that, uh, that uh, work at that facility quite often. Um, the gifts must have the tags still on, and drop-off boxes are at First Church, the Rotunda at Eno Hall, in front of the police station dispatcher at Town Hall, and the main fire station on Top Meadow. Uh, there are photocopies of the flyer, uh, and on the back of the large eight and a half by 11, uh, on the desk outside, uh, on the table just in the, in the area as you're exiting. Um, if you wanna know what uh, would be acceptable or what would be needed by these veterans. 
Uh, your donation is greatly appreciated. With that, I have a surprise announcement to make. I would like to invite John Hampton to the stand to make that announcement. Good morning and happy Veterans Day to all. Um, on Friday afternoon, I was called by the Commissioner of Veterans Affairs um, to let me know that one of Simsbury's own will be inducted into the Connecticut uh, Veterans Hall of Fame on December 6th. This is a tremendous honor. The Connecticut Veterans Hall of Fame was established to increase the awareness of the lifetime contributions of veterans after completion of honorable military service. The Veterans Hall of Fame is not a military hall of fame. Instead, it seeks to recognize veterans for their countless contributions to society after their service. Those selected into, for introduction are veterans who honorably serve their country through military service and continue to serve and inspire their communities and the state. Each year, the committee selects inductees from applications received from across the state and the nation. The Veterans Hall of Fame is administered and sponsored by the Connecticut Department of Veterans Affairs and the Connecticut Milita Military Department on behalf of the Office of the Governor. The first class of the Connecticut Veterans Hall of Fame was inducted in November 2005. To date, only, only 113 veterans are honored in the Connecticut Veterans Hall of Fame. In support of the nominee's induction, I wrote the following comments. Since leaving the active duty in the Navy in 1963, the inductee has earned three university degrees, including a PhD in educational leadership from Florida State University, where he is also a graduate teaching assistant and a student representative to the university's K-12 Experimental Research School Board of Education. He's currently in his 59th year of involvement with Connecticut Public Schools. On a personal note, he was the principal of my grammar school. <laughs> He served 10 years as a professor of educational administration and school finance in the graduate school at Central Connecticut State University, where he earned his bachelor's degree prior to Navy service. He served as an adjunct professor for undergraduate education majors at St. Joseph University for three years. His master of education degree and six-year certificate were earned at the University of Hartford. In his semi-retirement, he has set a Connecticut record when he filled his ninth interim superintendent of schools position. During the same period of time, he was hired to conduct superintendent searches for 12 districts throughout the state. As a resident of Simsbury for 54 years, he's been very active in foreign affairs, including service as commander of both the local veterans foreign wars and American Legion posts. He has been instrumental in planning and participating in the Memorial Day parades for Simsbury and Terrafell for more than 20 years, including serving as Grand Marshal, featured speaker, and Master of Ceremonies on many occasions. He was named an All-State Commander and Honor Commander by the State Veterans of Four Veterans of Foreign Wars during the 2010-2011 year. He serves as a uniform member of the local military color and honor guard whenever called upon to do so. <laughs> His service goes well, well, well beyond the military, as he has served on the Charter Revision Commission. He was named a hometown hero in 2017. He was a major architect of the Simsbury Veterans Memorial Committee. One of his favorite jobs is to uh, perform as Santa Claus for the past 22 years for the uh, University of Connecticut pediatric cancer patients who are taking a fantasy flight to the North Pole. This gentleman is a man of honor, dignity, and compassion. And again, I've known him my whole life. I've always looked up to him as an example of great public service. He has a wonderful family, a wonderful wife, children, and grandchildren. And I'm proud to announce the induction of Leonard G. Lanza into the Connecticut Veterans Hall of Fame, which will occur on December 6th.
and I think I still owe him some homework. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> I don't know that anybody in this audience has ever heard me say, I'm humbled. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not. I don't recall using those words, but I am. Thank you very much. It's, it's, it's an honor. And it's been a pleasure doing all of it. And of course, the one person to thank for all of it is my wife, Jane. When you listen to that resume, you know I was going a lot. <laughs> and I still am, but thank you. We have with us this morning um, a, a new addition to our program. I received a phone call uh, about a week ago from Christina Wonderly, who's here. Uh, she's representing uh, Lucky You Flowers. And she called to ask what she could do about uh, uh, donating flowers and giving flowers to uh, 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 all, all the veterans in attendance at today's ceremony. Christina, if you'll stand, please. Christina will be at the table in the back inside the auditorium, uh, and I'd appreciate it if all veterans would stop by the, the table, and Christina will be happy to give you a, a, a floral arrangement on, on your way to the rotunda after the ceremony. Okay. Again, thank you very much, Christina. Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Cameron Elliott, will you retire the POWMIA flag, please? John Fox, do the benediction. Please rise and uncover. This is, this is a prayer for Armistice Day. Dear Lord, today we honor our veterans worthy men and women who gave their best when they were called upon to serve and protect their country. We pray that you will bless them, Lord, for their unselfish service. Bless them abundantly for the hardships they faced, for the sacrifices they made. We respect them, we thank them, we honor them, and we are proud of them, and we pray that you will watch over these special people and bless them with peace and happiness in Jesus' name, we pray for peace in, the, in this beautiful world. Amen. I again would like to... Say thank you to the Junior Women's Club for providing the, the goodies out in the Rotondo. Um, don't leave too soon. Help yourself. Calorie free. And to all of you in attendance here today, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. And for the Boy Scouts and the Color Guard, thank you very much for your participation. We know we can always count on you. That's Troop 76. Commander of the Guard, retire the colors.
This assemblage is dismissed. Thank you. <clears throat> Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.